Well, I'm going to start because <clears throat> this is uh, part of one of the most exciting things that we're going to be doing today, which is you get to go into your virtual uh, planning room with the other folks, the other advocates from your state. And uh, we get to try the technology and just get prepared for the meetings you will be doing later on this week. My name is Christopher Cush and I work with Soapbox Consulting. We have the pleasure of scheduling the meetings for you for AIDS Watch. And this is a special year in terms of us needing to talk to a new Congress, but having to do it virtually. But I salute you because even with that challenge, here you are showing up at the beginning of a two year Congress, showing up at the time it matters to tell Congress that HIV and AIDS has to be a priority and doing what it takes to show up and share that message. So being here is a big deal. Getting this far is a big deal and it speaks to things like commitment. It speaks to things like urgency. The map you are looking at is a map of all the places we have requested meetings. So we have 568 participants from 42 states who are gonna be conducting 316 meetings with members of Congress later this week. And that means that this group is gonna meet with more than half of the United States Congress. So before I go any further, I wanted to remind everyone, you see on this map red dots, you see on this map blue dots. I'm sure you know what those correspond with, they correspond with the political parties of the people who represent you. Remember, after the election, the people who represent you in the House of Representatives and the people who represent you in the United States Senate, they represent you. So if you didn't vote for this person, we don't talk about it because it's too late to do anything about it. They still represent you. If you feel that you might not vote for this person in the next election, that's too far away. So we leave the elections, that is politics at the door. And when we have these kinds of meetings, we don't talk about voting. We talk about our priorities and what people can do to help those living with, fighting at risk for HIV and AIDS. So, I'm gonna ask you to be nonpartisan during these meetings. And I'm gonna actually challenge you a little bit more than that. I'm gonna ask you to warmly and sincerely ask the people who represent you, no matter what their party, to adopt our priorities and let those folks surprise you if you thought they wouldn't do it. I wanna extend a special welcome to our new advocates who are doing this for the first time. We want you to have a great experience with these meetings. We want you to come back. We wanna meet you in Washington DC face to face. So this is a very good time for you to have started doing it. So first of all, you're gonna be surrounded by experienced, dedicated advocates, some who have done this for literally decades. So you have lots of experience in and around you, but also there's lots of new members of Congress. In fact, 71 members of Congress are brand new. And that means they are having these conversations for the for first time, the way you are having these conversations for the first time. So you're all together in terms of this being a shared experience of people coming together from the same places in the country and sharing what they know and what they need. For those of you who watch Congress closely, after the last election, Democrats remained in control of the United States House, but by a less, lesser margin. In the Senate, Democrats were able to gain control of 48 seats. And when you add the two independents who caucus with the Democrats, the Senate became split 50-50, but a tie belongs to the vice president and Democrats control the White House. And that means since the last time we did this, 
Democrats are now in control of the United States Senate. And that provides opportunities for things that were not possible before. And also when party control changes, it changes sometimes a little bit about how we ask for things, not what we ask for, but how we ask for things. I have a hint for my veterans, veterans who every year participate in AIDS Watch. Remember with the new offices, this could be somebody who doesn't know anything about HIV and AIDS. This could be somebody who needs to learn from the start. These folks belong, the new members of Congress, these 71 folks belong to the groups who are patient and kind with their learning curve. So if you are a veteran, it's very easy after you have this great office that you could always just cut to the chase and talk about the latest with, it's very easy to feel a little disappointment when you've got somebody who doesn't know anything about anything. But I want to encourage you to reset yourself when you run into a new member of Congress and kind of go slow, be patient because they might be yours if you are kind to them during this time when they're just beginning their congressional careers and when they're also, they don't have a lot of power within that system. I'm gonna show you on your schedule how you can identify if somebody is a new member of Congress in just a couple minutes. By now, everybody should have received an email from Soapbox that has a code for our mobile tool. First thing I want everybody to hear, everybody should be paying attention to this, if nothing else. The mobile tool is not, is not an app. There's nothing to download to check out your schedule on the mobile tool. It's just a website. It's the website sboxmobile.com. You get that website in the email. You have a code. You put the code in at the website, and now that device will always remember you. My advice. Use your desktop or laptop if you have one. It makes these video exchanges much larger, much easier to navigate. So the Soapbox mobile tool works on any device that is connected to the internet. I will also tell you at the end of this presentation how to find out what your code is if you never received the code or if you don't find it either in your regular mailbox or in your spam mailbox, if you have an aggressive filter. You put in the code, we will ask for a mobile phone number, even though you can use Soapbox Mobile on your desktop or laptop. And that is because on Wednesday, we will send you changes to your schedule by push notifications, just to have another way to get a hold of you. We will also be sending reminders one hour before each and every one of your meetings through push notifications. So the first thing we ask for is um, a mobile phone number. Remember, we need you to log into the mobile tool and see that you've entered a cell phone number so that we know you're going to be present for meetings, particularly if we have scheduled with a member of Congress. <clears throat> To the right of this slide, you see the main landing page for Soapbox Mobile. Couple important icons here. At the bottom in red, you see an icon you can press if you have any trouble this evening or getting to your meetings on Wednesday, we have live assistance for you through the Soapbox help desk. There's also right in the middle, an icon that says documents. That's where you can pull up some of those issue briefs and review them, see them. Good news, we're sending a copy of the issue briefs to every member of Congress you are scheduled to meet with, but remember that people's inboxes are overflowing. Not all of them will receive them in time. Not all of them will print them out or look at them. So they may tell you, I don't think I got that, but they do have a copy of it somewhere in their email box so you don't have to forward the documents unless you feel that you have the time to do that after your meeting. On the upper right-hand part of the main navigation screen, it says your team. And those are the folks you've been grouped with 
to do your house meetings. You all share the same schedule. I'm going to show you how you can see the names of those people and their emails. And then the upper right is where it all comes together, including where I'm going to send you for your practice rooms so that you can meet each other tonight, make sure the software works for you, and be all ready for your meetings on Wednesday. If you press your team in the upper right hand corner of the main navigation screen, you'll see the names of those folks who are part of your house meetings. You all will share the same house meetings and the offices are expecting to see everyone on your team. You will see emails for everybody on your team. Please note, the Senate meetings are going to be much larger groups. So the, the delegation from your state will be much larger than you see on your team. The delegation from your state is who you are about to meet with. And we're doing that because one of the important things for the Senate meetings, because they're going to be so big, is every state delegation has to choose five people who can speak in the Senate meetings because there are gonna be so many people participating. So in those Senate meetings, everybody can observe, but only five people can speak. And part of us getting together tonight is to do that work of identifying the fewer people who can speak in the Senate meetings. But in those house meetings, you're gonna be in smaller groups. You can email each other and share cell phone numbers if you'd like, but everybody should plan on speaking and attending all of the house meetings on their schedule. Now I'm showing you where everything comes together. When you press schedule on the mobile tool, you will see your individual schedule. So please don't share your mobile tool code. You will be giving somebody incorrect information. You will see your schedule and right at the top of that schedule is a bright orange box. That bright orange box has a special code for tonight. It has a special link in GoToMeeting. And that link will take you to the place where you are going to meet your state delegation. So that's in the orange box. And when I'm done speaking here, everybody should open their mobile tool, go to the orange box and press the link. Underneath that are your meetings, each one with a link for Wednesday. So those links are different links and you should not be going to those this evening. But on the day of the event, you can press on those links and they will very similarly take you to the virtual room where your meeting is taking place. Please note, underneath those links, there's a call-in number. If your links don't work on the day of the event, you have the call in phone number and pin as backup, but you shouldn't ever have to use it. It'll even say if the office is doing a conference call or a video meeting with you, no matter what kind of meeting they're doing with you, you can use the link. So go to meeting, which is the platform we're going to use, can let you into the room even if this, the congressional staff or the member is going to be only joining via audio. A couple of important additional things on your schedule. You will see after your representative or senator's name in parentheses, you will see the name of the person in the office you are meeting with. That's the person you can expect to see pop into your go-to meeting room link or see jump in in an audio fashion without video into your meeting. You will also see it say new, N-E-W, if somebody is a new member of Congress. If somebody is a new member of Congress, remember to put the brakes on, go slow, start building their understanding and their support for the issues we champion. <clears throat> These meetings can and do change up till the day of the event. So I mentioned, we'll be sending you reminders on the day of the event before each meeting and if anything changes on the day of the event. But please check out this schedule before and between now and then so you can see if anything changes during the day tomorrow. Every single meeting has a feedback icon. This is where you can give some notes about what you discussed in the meeting, the topics you discussed, and what the office said. 
your team in DC will continue these conversations after AIDS Watch. So please always provide some notes for your team that fights for us year round. These notes are not only if somebody changes their mind or dramatically changes their position. If it's the same position you've heard before, still give us some details so we can continue that conversation. If you take a still photo of your computer screen and you ask for permission from the staff or member, you can post it as part of your feedback form. Under no circumstances have we negotiated you to take live video of any meeting. So there are zero meetings where live video has been allowed or permitted to be taped. And there are no meetings where live audio has been permitted to be taken. So if you somebody was discovered to have taken live video or, or live audio, that could damage us greatly with that office. So please stick only to still photographs and do that with permission. Now I'm gonna show you a couple things about GoToMeeting, the platform we're going to use. GoToMeeting is a simple platform. We use it not because it's fancy, but because we want folks who don't have broadband to be talking with Congress. We're meeting with over half of Congress. And that means we have to embrace a platform that is simple and that works everywhere. So those of you who like to have fancy backgrounds and animations ain't gonna happen. GoToMeeting is simple. Not much you can do, but you certainly can connect. So when you click on in the orange box, your practice link, it will take you right to the GoToMeeting room that is the practice room for your state. Your computer might say, first of all, do you want to download and allow your computer to open the GoTo opener? Yes. Allow your computer or give your computer permission to do that. Remember, it's easier to navigate all of this on your desktop or laptop if you have one. So give permission for the GoTo opener. That should take you right into the room. When you get to the room, you'll see a couple controls. Really simple, there's only three things you can do. You can press the icon with the two folks on there and that will show you who else is in your room. Again, a little bit more than that's on your team because it's your entire state delegation. You can chat to one another and you can configure your audio and video. I'm going to mention that there's something that will happen to some folks when you go to your room. You're not gonna have your audio and video pop up because you will not have closed out your Zoom. So every computer can only do one program at a time for audio and video. So once you've clicked on your link, once you've opened up your go-to opener, you're going to have to not only close your Zoom window, but quit out of Zoom to have your audio and video pop up. If, um, if you have any trouble, if you have any trouble this evening getting into your room by clicking on that link in the orange box, there is live assistance waiting for you. On the mobile tool, you can press the help desk icon to get our phone number, but it is up here in the upper right-hand corner. Live assistance is available at 202-362-5910. A couple final reminders. This will be a good time for states to identify the five people who can speak in the much larger Senate meeting. These offices are expecting to see you by name. They have clear rosters. They also have the list of issues you wanted to discuss. So please do not invite other people to join these meetings. That might derail an exchange with an office. Please do not share these links with anyone outside of yourself. Your links are for you. These are not town hall meetings. If you haven't done this before, these are 
basically business meetings, but they're not town hall meetings where friends and family could just pop on and ask any question they want to. In addition, I'm gonna challenge you to try, since we're all far apart and the meetings are still 15 to 25 minutes long, I'm gonna challenge you to try to be extra clear at the end of the meeting with each office about what we're asking for as a group. Remember when we talk to Congress, we are always telling Congress what they could be doing this week. And we only get Congress to help us if we get more than half of the House and three fifths of the Senate to do the same thing at the same time. So we'll keep talking with Congress and you'll keep talking with Congress. But when we're together and making this stand, we respect each other and we honor the strategy that makes it imperative that we all ask for the same things at the same time to get our work done. A final thing I would like to say is that as your day goes on, you will discover that you're in a meeting room and the staff and or member of Congress is getting later and later and later into the room. That is because in the virtual world, people fall behind. If that is the case, we're going to ask you to stay in the room for 10 minutes, have one person from your group reach out to the Soapbox Help Desk, this is on Wednesday, call us, we'll chase down the staff, remember, they will likely join your meeting a little late, but even if we have to reschedule, the group will stay together and Soapbox will pop in and let you know what's going on. So with that, I want to, and Ashley, if you could put my slides back a, a little bit, I want to get back to the slide that shows you that orange box. Let's see if I can get to that orange box. She's doing that. Oh, uh, that shows you the orange box on the schedule. And I'm gonna tell you two things. So if you did not get your code, you did not get your code for the Soapbox mobile tool, I am, putting in the chat for everyone, my email. If you did not get your mobile tool code for soapboxmobile, sboxmobile.com, you're gonna send me an email right now. If you did get your code, you're going to log into the mobile tool at sboxmobile.com on your desktop or laptop, press schedule, and go to the link that's in that orange box. Go there now, follow the instructions to install GoToMeeting, speak with each other, get your meetings and especially your Senate meetings organized. And the rest of the evening is yours once you get in and talk to the rest of your team. Thank you very much, everybody. And if there are no final comments or a, there might be some questions maybe, if there are some questions, I can take them. Otherwise, we'll start moving people from the Zoom platform into your practice rooms. Hi, Christopher. I don't know if you can see the Q&A box. Um, oh, yes, sorry. Go back up to the top. I think there were some questions in there. Yes, okay. If you haven't received your schedule, look in the box, uh, the chat, kush at soapboxconsulting.com, and I'll send that to you. You cannot share documents or your screen during your meetings, simple. But you can send people documents after your meetings. During house meetings, you will have time to answer, to have about five people speak. So it'll be the size of your smaller team. Uh, if you wanted to practice again tomorrow on Tuesday, you can call the help desk tomorrow and I will reopen your room. The codes should go to kush at soapboxconsulting.com. The Soapbox is just a website, remember, there is nothing to download. Yes, use your laptop. Yes, use your desktop. You can open up, you can go to GoToMeeting long before your meeting starts, so they should be open all day. We are still working on TBAs, especially if somebody uh, registered recently. So continue to check back for any meetings that are not with the meeting time at this point. And if you must use a cell phone or a tablet, 
then you can download the GoToMeeting app from your iTunes or your Google Play. So it is available there. It'll be a little harder to see, but it is possible there. Okay, that was my speed answering round. I'm gonna start going through my emails and answering people back directly with their mobile tool codes. Other folks can start making their way to that orange rectangle and clicking on it and making sure they can get into GoToMeeting. Thank you. Give me about 10 minutes to get through all the, the mobile tool codes for everybody. I'm working my way through it now. 